Today we're going to step back in time and explore life in the Charlottesville area from the late 1880s through World War I as documented by a successful local photographer. Join us as we visit librarian Edward Gaynor, curator of the Holsinger Studio Collection at the Albert and Shirley Small Special Collections Library at UVA. Come on. Edward, tell us about the variety of photos in the collection. Well, that's one thing that's so great about it. There are lots of different things. Halsinger, of course, was a businessman, so he made money taking studio portraits. So there are many, many, many studio portraits. But he also took his camera and went out into the streets and into the countryside and went to big events on grounds or downtown. Um, so there are pictures of houses and street scenes and the university grounds and school children and yeah, pretty much everything you can think of. Well, and how did the collection make its way to the library here? Well, the university was interested in it in the early 70s because they hoped that there would be photographs of the rotunda, particularly the interior, from before the 1895 fire. Oh, right. Because they were in the process of getting ready to do extensive renovations and they wanted to put it back like it had been. They were disappointed in that, but realized, the library realized what a great resource it was. And so it was actually a combination of a gift and a purchase from the man who bought the studio from Ralph Holsinger. And Ralph is the son. Ralph is the son of Rufus. Right, so Rufus, he passed away in 1930? Yes, 1930. He came to Charlottesville in the late 1880s and ran the studio on his own pretty much until about 1925 and he was in very poor health the last few years of his life and Ralph took over and ran it I believe into the 1960s and then it was sold to someone outside the family. And Halsinger had a fire in his studio as well. Yes, ah. in 1912 the studio caught fire and virtually all of the negatives and the documents and the studio ledgers that he created up to that point were destroyed. Oh. Um, so it really is a miracle that even that one photograph of the Rotunda Fire survived. And that was it? That was it. Right, and now it's at the Special Collections Library here at UVA. Right. And it's digital, Mo a, a lot of it is, is digital and accessible to everyone. Right, exactly. We purchased uh, about 10,000 glass plate negatives. There are no prints of all these photographs, they're just the negatives. And about 20 years ago, we scanned them all and they've been online ever since, about 10,000. Um, and so they're out there and searchable, free of charge. Tell us about the Special Collections Library here at UVA. This is sort of a little secret, I think. It is a secret, I think, from a lot of people here locally, which is which is too bad because um, we are a great resource for Charlottesville history, Albemarle history, Virginia family history. Um, this is where most of the university's rare books and manuscripts live. We are strong in American history, American literature. Virginia, of course, because this is UVA, a lot of those materials then are things that folks locally might be interested in. Yeah, um, but give us some examples. Well, we have the first map of Charlottesville that was made in 1818 when Charlottesville was about six blocks square. Oh, wow. And we have maps going right up to the very present, paper and digital now, because as the city's grown, of course it's changed. Hundreds of thousands of photographs. Uh, the Holsinger collection's just a part of what we have. Right, um, and letters. letters. Letters from soldiers. From soldiers in all the wars, the revolution up to the present. Um, women's diaries, um, business records of local businesses, some that still exist, some that don't. People well, who've been around a while might remember the Williams Corner Bookstore. Oh yeah. Their records are here. Yeah. Um, so a huge resource for people. Yeah, and, and fascinating because talking about Holsinger's collection, who did he photograph? Well, it looks like everyone was photographed. He was, he was the major photographer in Charlottesville for 25 or 30 years. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that's very interesting about it is there is a large number of portrait photography of African-Americans, local folks in the African-American community. 
of course, he would have been operating in the middle of segregation and Jim Crow, and that right. seems, on the surface, fairly unusual that he would have been essentially an integrated business. But it's actually, when you really think about it, it's not, because people would come in one or two at a time, they wouldn't be mingling, they wouldn't be sitting together. Yeah. yeah. And there are, there are photographs of children, a lot of really great portraits of children, mm -hmm. and also children who had passed away. Absolutely. It was a time when um, photography was a way to have uh, uh, a memory of someone who'd passed away in a way that couldn't be done easily before and so not just children but adults as well he would go to uh, funeral homes he'd go to cemeteries uh, sometimes the deceased child would be brought into the studio and for photograph there so they seem very odd to us um, and a little ghoulish because we don't do that now but it was actually not an uncommon thing and there are portraits of uh, graduates, graduates high school graduates and and, and, and soldiers getting ready to soldiers go to war. Soldiers getting ready to go to war. Lots of the local men who fought in World War I came into the studio in their uniform and had pictures taken. Didn't he photograph George O'Keefe? He did photograph Georgia O'Keeffe. Of course, Georgia O'Keeffe lived here. Right. And I think most people think of her as the, you know, the white-haired old woman in the desert southwest and this is a you know young lady in a sailor blouse oh i know that's so fascinating and then marion dupont scott marion dupont from montpelier from montpelier um mr holsinger took his camera out there he had a big studio camera but he also had a portable camera that he would take out you know and and not just places like that he would go out like west to crozet and um, photograph the apple harvest. And, and other prominent members of, of the town, businessmen, and then... Businessmen, faculty at the university, uh, President Alderman, they're probably, it seems like there are 20 pictures of President Alderman. Um, but of course he was a hugely important figure in Charlottesville right. at the time. But yes, um, local businessmen, prominent families. A witness in a trial. A witness in the Samuel McHugh murder trial. Uh, you know, uh, young women graduating from high school, brides coming in for a, a picture before the wedding. Oh, they're, oh, they're such yeah. great. I mean, yeah. they're, they're everything you can imagine. And then he also, as you were saying, he took his photo out and about. Absolutely. So. Probably the single most famous photo in the collection is the one of the Rotunda Fire right. from 1895. And Holsinger. Um, his studio was on West Main Street. I think it's in the 700 block. It's um, across from the train station and First Baptist Church on West Main Street. And so he was fairly close to the university. He was able to take his camera and come to grounds and set up and take pictures. And so there's some tremendous documentation of that. But he was sort of the unofficial, official UVA photographer. You know, he took pictures for the yearbook, mm -hmm. and he took pictures of events, and uh, parades, and pageants on the lawn, and graduation. Uh, you know, years and years he took graduation photos. Yeah. He would go out and take shots in the street, and interesting people that came by. Right. Um, or events that were going on. There's a great picture of the Monticello Guard marching down Main Street to go to the train station as they were embarking on going off to war. Right. You know, and a year or so later, there's a great picture at Midway um, when the armistice was announced. So, you know, it, you, he captured all of the big events in town. And town. So we look at our town and we can see what the streets look Absolutely. like. West Main, Main Street. Main Street, signs in the windows. Yeah. At Timberlake's Drugstore. Absolutely, yeah. And he kept a ledger. He kept a ledger, because it was a business, of course. Right. He charged uh, for photographs. And he recorded them in the ledger um, as they were taken. And he had a fairly complicated numbering scheme that we maintained because it was easier to hook it up to his ledger. Um, the one awkward part of it is you don't always know who the sitter is or who the person is because he recorded the person who paid for the, the person picture. Who paid. So occasionally <laughs> you'll see something, a uh, picture of 
say, uh, you know, a young man who's like, 15 or 16 years old in a suit and looking very dapper, and it'll say, Mrs. Smith. Well, clearly that's not Mrs. Yeah. Smith, but <laughs> yeah. that's probably his mother who paid for the picture. And again, these are digital, so anyone can access them, they can download them. Talk about what the photographs are used for. Oh yeah, absolutely. Anyone can use them. Um, they're out there to be used. You know, people people have copies made so they can have a portrait of great aunt so and so, and that's fine, and that's terrific. Um, people use them to illustrate books in various ways. There's a, there's a great illustrated history of Charlottesville that uses lots of the Holsinger photos. Right. But people have also used them for things. Um, uh, a, a researcher used a number of portraits of African American women on a study she did of. African American women and issues of their hair and hair as a signifier of social position. And so, hmm. um, you know, things that I wouldn't necessarily think you could get out of a photograph, but when, right. you're, when they point it out to you, you're right, of course. You can look, as you mentioned, you can look at fashion, you can look at the architecture of the buildings, you can look at you know, who's on the street in a small right. town. So the, the amount of material that's in there is only limited by what you can think of to use it for. So other than the photographs, are there other artifacts that you all have? There are a few. Uh, the, the glass negatives themselves are the biggest single artifact, but we do have several of Mr. Holsinger's studio ledgers, which are hugely important just to identify the people. We have two of his cameras, one of the studio cameras, which is immense. It's probably three and a half feet long, and when it was on a tripod, it stood about five and a half feet high. Uh, we also have one of his little portable cameras that actually folds up and you can carry it. It looks sort of like a lunchbox when you close it off. And that would have been the one, obviously, that he took out into the street because right. you couldn't move something as massive as that studio camera. Right. And you have his books. We have the books that were published, yes. Right. Absolutely. It's yeah. so fascinating. Edward, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's my pleasure.